What's up, everybody? I'm here on the line with one of the most popular and definitely the most consistent poker streamers out there, Mr. Jamie Poker Staples Staple. And Jamie, I know you had a big run last week and that a lot of people tuned in for that. Can you tell me how many concurrent viewers you held that day? What's going on, everyone? Thanks uh, for the intro grips. We made the final table of the Big 109, which was pretty epic, and we actually had 7,000 viewers at one point, which I've been th like, I can't even conceptualize how many people that is at once, so pretty crazy, man. 7,000 viewers. Yeah. Machine freaking poker. <laughs> All right, very impressive. And guys for watching this, that wasn't, that wasn't by flu. Jamie didn't just put up those numbers simply because he made a deep run in a tournament. Um, there is a lot that goes on that goes into uh, hitting those kind of numbers and running a high quality stream. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today in this video. And just before we get into it, Jamie, I wanna know, is your last name actually Staples? It is, yeah. Okay, so you're actually Jamie Staples. I ran good. I came up with uh, Poker Staples, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, let's talk to the uh, Twitch streaming master. So uh, with your stream, Jamie, do you focus on strategy or keeping it fun, or both, and why? I mean, it has to be a balance, right? And, and there's, there's room for all sorts of things. It can be just fun, it can be just strategy, and there's people that do that successfully. Uh, for me, myself, I think strategy is fun, right? Like, that's the fun part for me, is trying to play really good and, and understand what's going on with my opponents and, and how I should, you know, proceed against them. So, I mean, I, I stick to what I think is best for me which is talking about what I'm doing and being completely open and honest about that. Uh, that said, you know, that can be fun too, like I said, so, yeah. Yeah, I think learning how to like what people's asses and make more money while you're playing poker is definitely something that we all find very fun. Like, yeah. there's nothing more fun than winning, right? Yeah, for sure. And winning with your friends while your friends are watching, okay, that is the thing that is more fun than winning and that's <laughs> what you get when you stream poker at Twitch. Yeah. All right, cool. Now, if you had a, if you had to pick one, if you could only have one of the two, you can either talk about strategy, or you can not talk about strategy at all and have it purely be kind of like a hangout entertainment. What would you say is more important, information or interaction? Uh, man, you can only pick one. If you can only pick one, I know it's really tough, but I kind of want them to realize, like, well, I mean, I. It's it's a tough one, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess because there's so many other people that can that can play poker well. You know, I'm not the the best player in the world. Um, I'm pretty good, and I think I have a lot to offer people. But um, if I had to pick one, I think it'd be interaction. It'd just be hanging out. Um, would be more important. But I think you need both, man. <laughs> I yeah, think I, so. Yeah. I think it, I think you know, like in a perfect world, you have a little bit of both. But at the end of the day. When people come on to Twitch, they're looking to have fun, they're looking to be entertained, they're looking to just kind of relax and not necessarily have to like stress themselves or tax themselves too much mentally. So if they can only have one, I think the average Twitch audience is going to appreciate the, the interaction and the entertainment because if they wanted like hardcore training, they'd probably go join one of those sites that costs like a hundred bucks a month or something ridiculous like that. Right. Yeah, yeah for sure. So on the topic of uh, interaction, because you and I both realize it's, it's a pretty important thing. That's why people you know, really like to watch on Twitch. Um, can you tell us about the importance of paying attention to the chat? I know you're pretty, pretty famous with uh, your chat uh, stuff. Yeah, I think like this is what makes uh, Twitch what it is, right? It's, people aren't watching the show. They're part of the show. They could shape the show, right? Like they can ask questions, and and the mood of the chat sort of shapes the broadcasters' thoughts on things and and what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think chat is super super important. And when I stream, I try and answer every question I possibly can. Of course, sometimes when we have those deep runs and we have pretty big hype in the chat, like you can't answer seven thousand people's uh, questions. But you know, when it's a little bit more mellow, there's a thousand people. Um, you know, people ask and I try and answer honestly. I think that's really important. And it's what I love about other streams. When I'm watching some big streamer and I ask a question, they answer it. I mean, that's so cool, right? Like this is my entertainment and I'm part of it. So yeah. I think it's a really big deal. 
Yeah, you're like, you're quite masterful in the chat. Anytime I tune in and you're in your, you know, your comfort zone of like 1,500 viewers, I do not see a question get posted that you do not answer. And like the viewers definitely appreciate that. I think that's one of the reasons too why like Twitch poker training per se is so much different than like YouTube poker training or poker site poker training is that someone can get feedback pretty much instantly. Like we play on like a three to four minute delay because we don't want to get sniped. There have been some horror stories about streamers getting sniped. Um, so we got to protect ourselves. But other than the delay, you're pretty much getting as instant of feedback as possible. And um, I, know, I know that when I'm watching like other streamers, I, I love that I can be like, oh, why'd you do that? And it's like, boom, this is why I did that. And I figure if I want to learn a new game, uh, if I find a streamer who's good at that game, like you can probably learn really quickly when you have that real-time interaction, instant feedback on your play. Um, yeah, I think so. Just to add, I think it's like, it's sort of in between a live video session like you'd find at training sites, which I think I have, you know, they have value, I think. Um, and and between co private coaching, right? It's like sort of a melding of both together. And what's great is it's free, potentially, you know. Yeah, and I think there's also the, the kind of crowdsourcing effect too, that like, even if they can't get like all your attention, because obviously you're playing and doing your thing, there are hundreds and thousands of other people in the chat who are there for the same reasons that that viewer is. And if they play similar limits, you know, if someone posts a hand, other people in the chat are going to be able to like give them some feedback on that. So you get multiple opinions from people who are all there for the same reason, as opposed to like forums where like you might make a post because you want feedback on a hand and some other guy responds because he's just trying to blow some steam off or he's trying to get his post count up. Like they aren't all there for the same reason. So I think the quality of interaction between the viewers is so much higher quality and better on Twitch than it is like on any other platform really. Right. Yeah. Um, so speaking about um, how, you know, the viewers can kind of, change the tone of the show and control the show and i know what you mean because the chat really feeds you and yeah the, the streamers who like talk like a mile a minute um uh, people are like dude how do they talk fast i'm like bro it's because he's got like 50 different topics right in front of him. he's like oh we can talk about that we can talk about that we can talk about that yeah but it's not always all good you get the occasional uh douchebag coming through so how do you deal with the trolls the haters and then, like, the total randos who, like, don't even know anything about poker, like, how, how do you deal with them or address them or accept them? What's, what's your approach with these guys? Right. Yeah, so I think there's lots of approaches for this, too. Um, I can only speak to what sort of I do and my approach. So my show, like, I try and be completely honest about who I am as a player. Like, not just what I'm good at, but also what I suck at, what I'm trying to improve at and stuff like that. So when people troll me, you know, and they try and, and pick at things that uh, maybe I'm not so good at, I mean, they're usually right in a way. You know, they phrase it poorly, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just be honest, right? So a common one, people come in, they're like, hey, man, you're out of shape or something. And I'm like, yeah, man, I am. And I'm working on it. I'm not that great at it. So and then, like, they don't know what to do, right? It's just like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm a jerk. <laughs> basically and that's that so um i i try and kill it with kindness and just be completely honest and open about what they said and whether i agree with it or not in terms of like new players and stuff like that there's tons and i think that's why i made the stream in the first place is because i think poker is an awesome game and people need to learn about it and you can't do that on forums because people just make fun of you and stuff so i try and answer questions that even could be trolls you know they could be people making fun of me, but I, I treat every question seriously uh, as if someone really wants to know, like, what hand beats what hand, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, that's really good. And I think one thing you said there is, like, super, super good. And I think it's something that comes with the territory of kind of becoming an Internet personality and being out there. It's like, you really got to be honest with who you are. And you can't try to hide that because when you're in the public eye, like... That stuff, it's going to come up. Uh, people are going to be aware of it. You've tried to be like, nah, like, that's not me. That's not my thing. People are just going to call you and be like, well, nah, dude, like, you're lying. Like, why are you lying about that? Yeah, yeah. But by being able to, like, face it and then you're like, okay, like, like this is something I want to work on or this is something I'm not great at. And I, I have things like that, too, like, on my stream. People are like, oh, like, 
you know, you, your deep stack plays so bad. I'm like, yeah, you know, like my, my deep stack play could improve. I could like practice some cash games. But by acknowledging it, then you uh, give yourself the chance to, um, yeah. And then when we're like able to kind of admit what those faults are, or not necessarily those faults, but those, those leaks we have or those areas where we lack, we allow ourselves to really own what that thing is, face it head on, and then start to like attack it and change it. And I think what's, what's really powerful about the Twitch community is when you are one of those people and you're being like really authentic and, and you're sharing that with your viewers, they can sense that and you attract people who are doing the same thing. And I've actually been really fortunate to find like quite a few life-changing teachers who have had like a really big impact in my life over the past few years found me through my YouTube videos and found me from like hanging out in my Twitch channel and they're like, oh, I like this guy, I want to be around this guy. Oh, he's, he's struggling in that area. I happen to be good at that area. Hey, I'm going to reach out and try to help him because he's, you know, helped me by giving me so much for free. Right, yeah, totally. I know what you're saying. Like, th there is other approaches too. Like, I think that the the being open is the best and, and like you said, it has these pretty cool benefits where the community grows around you being a real human as opposed to it being like a produced show. But there are other options as well. I mean, you can ignore people, right? If there's enough chat, like it will get phased out very quickly. So you can just ignore the stuff you don't want to answer. That works for some people as well as you can do like a heavily moderated chat. You know, you can just ban people or time them out. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty satisfying to hit people with the old band <laughs> I like to, when people come in and they're trolling, like, first I'll, like, I'll play with them a bit, and then I'll be like, oh, you think you're smart, eh? Let's see how smart you are in the corner, I'll give them a little time out. And then when they come back, like, if they're still, like, really just going for it, I just, I just hit them with the perma. Yeah. So, I, think, I think when you get, like, the really crazy numbers, like, as you start to really maintain that 5K viewership, I think having, like, a few dedicated mods is really important because... Although you want to answer every question, you don't want spam in your chat. And as a streamer who's playing the game, you don't have time to do all that. So having a team of dedicated mods, I think, is very helpful for you know just keeping everything smooth and keeping the community and the experience the way you really want it to be. I think so, yep. Um, and talking about community, um, I know you have a lot of regular viewers. So I'm curious, you know, how do you take care of your followers, subscribers, your regulars, your donators? And um, why is it important to make those people feel special? Right, yeah. So there's there's people that, um, you know, this this is a daily part of their life, you know. And I'm some that way with some dreams as well, where I'm there every day hanging out, right? It's, it's really a community. So I think this is something I need to improve at um, going forward because I don't do any giveaways or, you know, special content for subs or, or followers or anything, um, which, you know, probably should be improved on my on my front um I, my philosophy up to this point has been i want to make sure that i serve as many people as i can so um instead of like you know focusing on a giveaway and doing you know two or three people um i really wanted to just provide the best stream i can and be there every day consistently you know i thought that was going to be the best thing for the most people so um yeah in terms of like actual tangible value um I, I don't really have anything right now, but uh, I do make sure to shout out the people that follow, the people that subscribe or, or donate to the stream. Uh, I think Twitch alerts or, you know, similar services where it actually pops up on the screen when someone subscribes, donates. That's really important because I want to recognize them for supporting what I do. And I think it's a cool part of the show, right? Once again, you get to be a part of it. Yeah, so. I, think, I think the pop up on screen is very important because like oh i just click the follow button and I, I get to be on the show like or if i click the donate my message gets to get read on the thing like that's pretty cool yeah and I think, like also like on the topic of like tangible things we live in kind of like the world of kind of abundance right now where kind of everything you get is you want is one click away you know you go on amazon you can get it whatever and these days it's it's the intangibles that are worth more so getting that shout out just getting the hey how you doing bro because you recognize their name every day they come on to watch your show. I think in a lot of ways that's worth more than, than getting some prize from a giveaway that's no different than what they could get like you know at the store or anything like just yeah. acknowledgement of like hey man like I remember you, I recognize you, you you matter, you're a buddy of mine. 
I think that goes way farther. So I think what you're giving to your regulars is, is way better than just a random trinket or goodie. Right. Yeah. So, um, so far we've focused on what I would agree with you is the most essential component of a successful stream. And that is how you treat your audience, how you interact and engage with your fans. I personally would say that that's about, you know, like 80% of running a successful stream with the other 20% being those kind of fine touches. Um, is it cool with you if we talk about those kind of features for a bit? Yeah, sure. The kind of like, the kind of like, that's like the outer game of streaming, whereas we just talked about the inner game, which is way more important because that radiates out. So, all right, let's talk about, this is my favorite because I'm, I'm all about, you know, the aesthetics. It's got to look good because they want something nice. To, if they're going to stare at your stream for like eight hours, it better fucking look good. Yeah. So, how important is having a good layout and what elements do you think are important in a good stream overlay or layout? Yeah, so I think it's it's really important, like you said, but what's more important is being there, like we talked about, streaming every day. You know, I had quite an ugly layout for a long time uh, until I finally got my stuff together. Um, but once you have it, it just, like, it streamlines the experience, right? People don't want to see a bunch of tiled windows and, and really complicated stuff. They want it to be smooth. Uh, you want the aesthetics to be sort of comfortable to watch and stuff like that. So... Um, yeah, I think it's really important and it's a super easy one to research. You can just look at the top stream, top streams, the top streamers, see what they're doing, you know, and, and see what people like about it. Um, I think for poker specifically, cause we're on delay chat is pretty important to know where, where you are in the delay. Some people do it without, that's fine for me. I, I really like it. And some people like to full screen and, and not interact with chat and just watch. Yeah. So I like that. Um, Face cam. I'm interested how you think about this. I don't really even open streams without a face cam. Um, yeah, I want to see, like, a huge reason I'm watching the stream is because I want to see how the, the person who's playing the game is experiencing it. How do they feel? Are they having fun? Are they, like, all, like, miserable and shit? Like, yeah. that really matters. If I wanted to just watch the video game, I just play the video game myself. Like, yeah. I, I want to see, I want to be able to vicariously live the experience of the streamer and if i can't see them i can't really feel what's happening to them and i can't really have that full experience that, that i'd expect when i come on twitch yeah absolutely so i think that's like that's the most essential thing to me is the face cam yeah. um and then those secondary things of of featuring uh the people that support you and support the show and you know keep it going you know uh, so like the recent subscriber is something i just added which is kind of cool um like followers, um, you have top donator or something like that, or the recent ones uh, scrolling through or something like that. I think those are good just as a thank you. Like here's your, you know, here's a placement on the stream um, for you supporting this show, basically. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's really good. The more ways that people can have their name on the screen, even if it's just for a couple of seconds. To really know that they're a part of this experience, I think that goes a long way. So, um, yeah, I'd agree with you on all of it, and I also agree that like layout is is a it's the icing on top of the cake. You being there, you streaming, you is the cake, and the the overlay is just kind of the icing that makes yeah. it look extra pretty. But what's inside needs to be what's good. Uh, I'm curious, how has the viewer response changed since you made that upgrade uh, a few weeks ago? Um, it's been 95% positive. There's still some things I have to fix. And, you know, there is a small demographic that thinks, um, there should be no money on Twitch, right? That like, you, you shouldn't earn anything for, for streaming. So some people don't like the donations, uh, but it's a very, very small minority. And, and like I said, I just want to, you know, recognize the people supporting me. So yeah, in general, it's just much more streamlined. I think people enjoy watching it more, uh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And yours yeah. is the best. I mean, it's been really great since the start. I've always been impressed of your like streamlined layout. I mean, from day one, it was just exceptional, man. So I definitely took some inspiration from your from your stream on that front. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm glad that I can share some benefit to you as well, the same way you have for me. Um, all right. Well, now you got me all blushing. <laughs> what about the tomato face? Tomato face, yeah. <laughs> all right, so... This, this next one is one where um, we go opposite ways. Uh, 
um, because I like I like to do music. I like to kind of like treat my stream as like it's a party stream. Let's get hype. It's the weekend. We're gonna have some fun, and then we're gonna go out. Whereas you go with the no music approach, where you know it's a lot it's a lot calmer and just kind of more chill and mm -hmm. easier to interact. Um, but what do you think the benefits of going with music versus no music are? Um. So yeah, most streamers have music. Like I'm in the massive mi minority on this front. There's a couple of things. One, legality is uh, it's sort of gray. Like it's it's pretty much illegal to play music that is copyrighted. I mean, no one's been prosecuted yet, but that worries me because I'm really in it for the long haul. Okay. <laughs> so, um, that that's a bit worrying. It does hype up the chat, though. You know, it it carries the dead time much better. Um, the other thing is I, I also don't want to turn people away that may not like my taste in music. So I, I tell people to play their own in the background if they want to. Mm -hmm. Um, but that said, I do have plans to play music during breaks, um, before the stream and after the stream. It's just, I haven't got my own stuff made yet. Yeah, makes sense. And so, I think that that's a good option, you know, that people can, people don't realize they can play their own music in the background and just like set the volume of that window to, you know, half the volume of the window for your stream, or, you know, they have volume meters on YouTube and like Pandora and everything now and Twitch. So you guys can play your music and just put it lower so that's more kind of background ambient and still get the full experience of the Twitch interaction because I think the feedback you give is a lot better when it's not drowned out by music at all. Mm -hmm. So I think giving them that plus the flexibility to listen to whatever they want is good. I yep. think the only problem is when they like they don't know what they like, so they end up listening like top forty radio. Well, that's your own problem, guys. There are lots of places. Okay, so yeah, I think I think we've covered most of the the kind of like the key pillars that build a strong stream. So when it all when it, when it all comes together, what do you think it is that keeps so many people? coming back to your stream day in, day out, because your numbers are, are really fantastic, especially for poker. Like, you are, you're a trailblazer right now. Well, thank you, man. Um, I mean, one is just being there consistently. Um, looking at, you know, around the community, I, I can mention three people that have sort of been there from the start. One is Jason Sarmoville. Of course, he was sort of the pioneer uh, of Twitch poker. There was people before him, but re he really took the lead. Um, set over set poker as well is has been there since day one streaming four days a week um, but during the day like there hasn't been someone doing at least five six seven days a week you know so yeah. that that's really important keeping a schedule um, but yeah I mean it's a it's a combination of everything being very open again being able to share in my journey trying to make it to the high stakes and sort of make it in this poker world uh, be a really good professional make it to the top um, and yeah, just answering questions. I mean, um, I think that sort of allows people to, to make it their show. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I think the, the schedule is huge guys. If you're out there and you're thinking about starting a new stream, your schedule should be the first thing you figure out because people need to know when you're on so that they can plan that into their weeks. You know, mm -hmm. not everyone's on your schedule. So when you're like, oh, I feel like going live. Well, someone might be busy. They might have an obligation. But if they know before the week starts, oh, these are the times I can tune in and watch Jamie, they're going to say, all right, well, I can't make Monday and Wednesday, but I'm going to make sure that I make Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, that way they can fit you into their schedule so they can tune in. So the schedule is really huge. And I think the other thing, um, what you're talking about, about documenting the journey, everyone loves to watch people win. They love a hero. They love someone who succeeds. But they also like to see that someone goes through the same struggles and the same bullshit that they go through um, because it's a lot more real and it's easier to relate to uh, as opposed to the people we see on TV and we think that it's just been a smooth ride for them. We only see them at their best. People like, they, they want to see that a bit, but really the guy they want to spend all their time with is the guy who's going through the same stuff they are who can really relate, and when a problem comes up, they'll be like, oh, I've never had to deal with that. I'm a superstar. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, like, I had that. Here's how I dealt with it, and here's how I move forward. So I think that realness, um, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely what keeps me coming to your stream, too. You know, I, I want to see how you're doing. I want right. to see what's going on that day. Yeah, I'll learn a couple of things here and there, but I mainly want to see, you know, 
how's Jamie doing on the grind today? Is he is he closer to his goal? Like, you know, where is he in the evolution? Because that's that's great. Um, okay, so that's that's what keeps them coming back. I'm curious now, what keeps you coming back to streaming day in day out? Um, that's a good question. It's I mean, it's a whole new experience for me. Um, I finished school. Well, um, finished for me school. I didn't get a degree uh, this past September. So about four and a half months ago, I sort of decided to go full time. And that just, you know, synced up with Twitch. And it it gave me a whole new life in this poker world. Something I've been playing for five years. But, I mean, now I get a chance to interact with the community. Not just be, you know, a player, but actually be part of the poker world so, I mean, it, like, how can you not love waking up and having a thousand people invested in how you do that day? And, like, how would you not love playing poker doing that? So, um, I do it because I, I get to sort of be a guiding light to a bunch of people that are, are finding poker for the first time. Um, it makes me really excited. So, it's, it's, it's great when you have something that, you know, it's, it's, it's not just about you anymore about something greater yeah. and you're, you're giving values they're like hell yeah i'm gonna get up because you know i got people counting on me and i'm gonna go make those people's days better yep and by by natural effect of that my day's gonna be better too but like that yeah i definitely feel you that's that's what that's what gets me out of bed every day is like i want to go make people happy so i'm gonna go out and do that by whatever means it is to get me to uh, to get that done yep um, okay so you talked about some of the guys who have been there since the start, the guys who are consistent. Who are the streamers that you most enjoy watching? And what is it in terms of qualities and attributes that you see in them that you feel makes them great streamers? Right. Okay, so in terms of poker listing, I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it blank because there's so many and I know I'll forget people and I'll feel terrible. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty you know, when I'm not streaming, I'm I always have the poker listing up. I'm in and out of streams, checking people out. And there's new people every every day. There's new streams that are doing things really well. Um, you know, a big shout out to Jason Somerville for kicking this off, essentially. I mean, he he's the one that led the way. So I'll say that he, you know, he launched things. And I really look up to the way he does things. Um, but there's some other streams outside of poker that I think are awesome. Summit 1G uh, is a stream I just started watching like a couple days ago. Um, and it's just so awesome, man. He plays like CSGO and H1Z1, which are both games I've never played before, but it, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, he's just, he's very genuine, uh, with people and he has like 20,000 viewers all the time, but he's just talking to them. You feel like a community, even with that many people. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of the kind of guy I like to watch. Then again, there is some other streams that are more uh trolly you know more jokes and stuff like that i mean that's not my style um but they can be entertaining too you know i think he just matches my personality in a way for sure i was actually hoping that you were going to talk about streams outside of the poker world right people who are going to be watching this video have probably watched most of the poker streams so they know and i think what you said at the end it's, it's it right there find the stream that matches your personality best and watch that. If you're a prankster, if you're a jokester, find a stream that's all about trolling. If you're someone who's just more of a, a voyeur, find the stream with the hot chick, like whatever. <laughs> whatever that give you your entertainment and make sure you enjoy your time most when you're on Twitch. That's who you should be watching. So guys, it's important just just shop around. Don't always only go to the, the stream with the biggest viewers. Usually it's a good place to start. There's a reason they have the most viewers. But don't be afraid to experiment and jump around. I tune into streams that have like four viewers, ten viewers, just to see what's going on. Because you never know if there's like if there's a diamond in the rough there that's just getting started. Maybe why that's why they don't have a lot of viewers, but the potential's there. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that I mean that wraps up my questions. Um, Jamie, this has been really awesome. Like, thank you, thank you so much for for doing this little uh, interview. I mean, more of a conversation with me. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a lot, and I'm sure, I am sure that once this thing goes live, we're definitely going to see an increase in the quality of the average stream moving forward since we've, we've kind of outlined the playbook. And who knows, right. maybe, uh, maybe me and Jamie will actually write an official playbook, a little PDF for you guys to <laughs> use the notes for this video if you're like, I don't have 30 minutes to watch these two guys talk. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, thank you so much, man, for having this having me on. It's been awesome. I'm a huge fan of your stream and your community. I mean, the community especially is just uh, um, they're all over the place. The Gripsters, man, yeah, they're global. Because I ban those those trolls insta, so there's no negativity going out of yeah. my community. Um, okay, so so uh, thank you. By the way, like means a lot. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoy what I'm doing. So all you streamers out there. Please post your thanks to Jamie below the video. And if you have any questions, comments, or things you feel we missed out on, maybe there's something that needs to be thrown into a high-quality stream that we didn't mention in this video, please post them below as, as well, and we will both do our best to address those comments and respond to those comments as they come out. Um, and if you guys want to check out Jamie's stream, it's at twitch.tv forward slash poker staples. I don't think I need to spell that out, but uh, if you're no good with that kind of stuff, there will be a link in the description below. And he streams Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays starting at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, which is like around 3.30 Euro time. Is that right, Jamie? I think so, yep. Okay. Yep. And just, just so the viewers can have an idea of what they can look forward to at your stream, uh, can you throw us like a couple of Poker Stables originals that you've coined? All right, yeah. So, I mean, there's only a couple, and I haven't really coined it. The first one, ah, yeah. You know, you hear that in live poker rooms around the world. Yeah, and you, and you do a really great impression of it. But I mean, I throw that one out there quite a bit. Every time I bust, I tend to say that's okay. Okay. Um, we're talking about capped ranges, which is a, a pretty high-level concept, but when your opponent can't have the best hands, it's called a capped range. But okay. since we're on Twitch, we got cap a range, right? The troll face, right? Yeah, yeah, cap of the troll face. Yeah. So it's not capped range anymore, it's cap a range. And um, my personal favorite, the lemon lion, man. When you got to get hyped up, do you, do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty aggressive, okay. Okay. So everyone out there, you have to do it along with me or else it's really embarrassing, so... If you ever have to get hyped up, get focused, you do a lemon line face. Here we go. Yeah. How how can you feel now, man? Uh, the stream hype is real. You already taught me that. So, guys, <laughs> these are some of the things you can uh, expect if you tune in Jamie's stream. It's pretty much seven days a week. And actually, looking at the schedule, the only days he's not on, I'm on. So if you want to watch Poker Stream, between the two of us, you got us covered. There you go. You got all the other ones to choose from, which will be in the poker listing. So uh, again, awesome. Thank you, bro, so much for doing this with me. And I'm going to go ahead and let you give us the sign out for Team Grips. Well, thanks to everyone uh, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Take what you learned, get out there, and get stacking. See you later.